Numbers, the 26th chapter. Go and look at verse 9, 10, and 11. And we'll read that in the New King James. It's getting a little brighter in context. King James is almost the same thing. Again, it just gives a little bit, take a little bit out of the old English reading. But Numbers 26 chapter, verse 9 through 11. The sons of Elab were numeral, Dathan and Abiram. These are the Dathan and Abiram representatives of the congregation who contended against Moses and Aaron in the company of Korah. When they contend against the Lord, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. And that company died when the fire devoured 250 men and they became a sign. Nevertheless, the children of Korah did not die. The sons of Korah, or all the sons of Korah, did not perish with their father. Somebody said, Daddy, I ain't going out like that. That's not my subject. I just want to just put that in the atmosphere. <laughs> the subject is that I live to worship. I'm alive to worship. I live to worship. I don't know why God gave me this message, but we'll work it out. Worship is something that is dedicated, dedication and devotion to the service of the Lord. John tells us when, he meets, when Jesus meets the woman at the well in the fourth chapter that they that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in, in truth. Right. Worship is honoring the Lord from your heart. It's a heart thing. It comes from the seat of your affection that you worship him. Not for what he gives, but for who he is. For who he is. Worship is as an expression of adoration to God for all that he has done, because it's a form of celebration. And note the cadence when the worship leader says, let's worship the Lord, and you know how easily you go into praise. But worship is an extending of hands, opening of heart, and adoring God. You block everybody out you came to church with, and you start worshiping the Lord. Stop thinking about where you parked your car and is it going to be dent when you get out of church. Bring all that into subjection to worshiping of God. Praise is, is a bold declaration. Worship is humble, bowing in the presence of God. Sometimes I adore the old church when you could not come through the door and not be Catholic. You could not come through the door without getting to your seat and going on your knees. It was not a, a religious thing, it was just a humbleness of, I'm humbled to be in the house. You should, you should try it at least twice a year. Just, just, just come down, get in your seat, and just go down on your knees, and just say, Lord, I, I thank you. I know some of you haven't been to the gym, and you, you can't, you, it take you about 20 minutes to do this. But, <laughs> but thank God for you that can just come in, and just kneel, just say, Lord. Thank you. And the knees still work. Um, this story gives us insight to rebellion. Rebellion is the opposite of going against authority. It always begins in the heart. It's the heart turns. The people you help the most, somehow it turns in their hearts. Here is something never to forget. Never loan money. Just give yourself away. It hurts you. Just don't get into that. Rebellion here is, is manifested in disobedience, choosing not to go the way directed and not doing what one is told to do. Now, none of you here never been rebellious and a rebellious bone in you you did everything your parents told you to do 
Especially that night you went out and they told you don't go. And I don't want you with that guy and don't run with them girls. I don't want you with that group. No, not that I don't trust you. I don't trust them. But you went anyway. I know you did. If you can, just kick your foot a little bit. Say the fruit don't fall. But at least he kicked me a little bit further away from that type of rebellion. First Samuel, the 15th chapter, this guy named Saul that was going to fight against the Amalekites. And the prophet told him, the Lord says, destroy everything when you get down. But don't save anything. Saul intended to talk to Samuel said, but the people wanted me to keep a few things. He said, but I told you, Saul, to get rid of everything. He says, well, how do you know I kept some things, Samuel? He says, because I can hear the batting of the sheep. Some sheep are somewhere that you should have got rid of. He kept them. He tells him in 1 Samuel 15, chapter and verse 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion is sinful as witchcraft or divination. We can talk about the psychics and the pond re readers, but rebellion is just as bad. That's what the Bible is saying here. And stubbornness is as bad as worshiping idols or false gods. In the 16th chapter of Numbers, I'm going to just pop some thoughts through there. It gives us this idea of rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. I may not be announcing their names biblically right. It might be announcing their names from Fresno. But Dathan and Abiram here in 16th chapter of Numbers came up against Moses and God's wrath was poured out upon them. I told Moses, you take too much upon yourself. God's not just talking to you and blah, 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 blah. And, and you had this context of the censors the going before prayer before God. And that's where they got really turned around wrong, trying to go up against God and God's man. The earth opened up and devoured 250 princes, swallowed them up. Moses had already prophesied in the 16th chapter of Numbers, in verse 30, he prophesied speaking. They said that God would do a new thing in the earth. It will open his mouth and swallow those men alive that, have, that will not die a common death. He told them what was going to happen because they rebelled against him. All of God's miracles display his creative power. Ground opened up. Can you imagine seeing something like that? That they're talking, while well, Moses is talking, and he knows that those are not saying anything, their hearts are turned toward, against him. And all of a sudden, they go down. And you didn't expect them to go down. But poop, poop, in the earth, and fire devoured them up. 250 of them went down. The whispers broke out. They rebelled against Moses and Aaron's God's leader. Years ago, before I, when I started pastoring, I had some sense of contest that did not want me to be the pastor. And I was glad, Jesus, Lord, let this go down. <laughs> we took the church over, it had 13 people, but the partition came in, signed, all names, 26 people. I said, this is good. I took the petition back to Los Angeles, gave it to my bishop, Robert McMurray, he said, they don't want me to be pastor down there in Las Vegas. I'm going to come back to Los Angeles and be a general contractor. He tore it up in my face and told me, get on back to Las Vegas. As he was eating strawberries and sugar, and the sugar was just dropping all down his shirt and everything. Let's get out my house, get out my, get out my church house, get on back down to Las Vegas. Said, but they don't want me. They've signed the petition to say they don't want me. And I had to come back to a church of 26 people who said they didn't want me. And I said, Lord, this is not going to be easy because I don't want to be where I'm not loved. And I looked at some of the names on the list and said, I didn't think there was a member here, but they signed this. I haven't seen them since the church started, but here they are, all the names. And it was so heart-wringing that it's like, wow, so why do I have to face this type of, of, of ministry calling? And sure enough, um, I went on, the church went on, went on pastoring, the rest becomes history that we're still here. But 
But I had a list. Now, the is going to pass out some cards this morning, and you just put on there yes or no, so we can see what the crowd looks like this morning. I want him, I don't want him. I like him, I don't like him. And then I'm going to send one back to you. I like you, I don't like you. It's okay anyway. <laughs> So much rebellion, and the ground opened up and swallowed these people up. Um, my, my bishop, my late bishop, rest his heart, rest in glory, um, as I was mentioning about starting and pastoring, I had that moment, I went to him, he says, this is nothing. Right. He said, I had one of, the, one of the main leaders in my church that came against me. So I never think that they would come against me, but they did, and they got a coup against him and wanted him to leave town. These people were so, that they sent a U-Haul to his house and told him, pack your stuff and leave. And this guy started preaching on a whole nother level. He started preaching on a whole nother level. He's like, what spirit motivates you, you know, and all this stuff. Um, bird, two birds on a mission, yeah. Um, shortly thereafter, the, the person that led the coup got sick with terminal cancer, went to his house, crawled in his office, and said, the Lord told them, if you pray for me, I will live. And he's thinking, this might be the end of the rebellion if I don't pray. But because his heart's the way it was, he prayed, and God healed her. Nonstop. Completely cancer gone. She got a little better, but not completely. Because if the heart doesn't change, you can be physically healed, but ugly on the inside, with nothing beauty about you. So, this rebellion is something not to play with. So, back in number 16, come on, Clinton, move a little faster. 16th chapter, okay, the ground opens up and swallows these people up. And you would think that everybody would be shocked and all. Like, I don't want to ever be on the wrong side of God or God's servant. If God's got to deal with him, God, you deal with him. But I'm not going to touch your anointing and do my prophet no harm. 16 chapter and verse 41 to down to verse 50, you that are Bible readers, it says this thing happens again. There comes up another rebellion. A spirit that comes up in the heart. And they come against Moses and Aaron. And God has to manifest now another plague among the people. Aaron goes in among the people and begins to bring the censer, which represents prayer. I'm paraphrasing 16th chapter, Numbers, verse 41 to 50. But still in the midst of him praying, 14,700 people died. And the plague stayed. Punished because of their disobedience. Let me help you out. If you find someone that don't like the preacher, just get on the other side. So the ground don't open up and God starts moving a plague. He could be wrong as two left shoes, but if that's God's man, leave him or her alone. Yes, whatever. How dreadful God's power to be displayed, yet Aaron, the intercessor like Christ in between God and man. Because we all have a sense of disobedience in us. We have a sense of, I don't want to do that. But yet we align our hearts back to the things of God. I live to worship. I live to be obedient to God. In this 26th chapter, verse 11 of Numbers, verse 11 is where I'm bringing us to for the next hopefully 10 minutes. However, the sons of Korah did not perish with their fathers. All this rebellion, but it didn't get in these young men. They realized that God is serious when he is serious. So they were not going to go down with the daddy and this rebellion that he had brought up. Hence, you see throughout the Psalms that the sons of Korah 
they're his children, wrote over some, I think, 11 Psalms, 44 to, 50, to 40, 49. They, brought all, they wrote also 84, 85, 87, and the 88 Psalms. These are their songs of faith to God. I believe if you see the ground open up, you can write a real good number one bestseller. I believe there's a song in you that you can write that Stevie Wonder will try to get the royalties on it. You see the ground open up with some folk, yeah. Or you see some people hit with some plagues that they can't get away from. The, oh, I got a song, child. <laughs> oh, goodness, I have a song. Watch me. <laughs> That's okay. It's, it's, it's not a hymn. The psalm, a song of, 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 of dedication here, their songs of dedication, it forms their faith in God, the sons of Korah. They sing from a level of faith in God. Remembering the remarkable experience of seeing the ground open up and God's wrath upon rebellion. They have glimmers in their psalms of bits of glory. Very little sadness or harshness, but they see the glory of God in each song. The sons of Korah sing songs of faith, remembering the judgment that God had passed, but they did not die. I think I'm trying to say is that we should have died, but we didn't die. We should have been taken out, but we were not taken out. Because you know when you told your mama and your brother, I can't stand you. God should have judged you right there. I'm sorry, not y'all, but y'all know what I'm talking about. When you told your mama when she walked out the room, let's have a testimony of service. How many ever mumbled to your parents under your breath? Okay. Some of y'all are raising your hand. Let me ask you another way. How many ever mumbled to your parents under your breath? Put your hands down. How many mumbled and know you didn't say anything, but they heard you? That's the fear. When they turn around and say, I heard you, so I didn't even say anything. I just heard you. How many ever heard them tell you, I saw your body language? Did you look at me with that tone? I brought you in this world? I didn't know what out they meant because <laughs> they sure didn't have a lawyer fee, but they knew do something to try to get me out here. The sons of Korah, according to 1 Chronicles 6 chapter, I'm staying numbers, I'm just jumping to some notes. They were given by David to be in the head position of the congregational worship. They were singers in the congregation. Everyone wants to be on the worship team, but everyone does not have the, have, everyone does not have the experience to be a true worshiper on the worship team. Because when you're on the worship team, you've been through something. And you made it out all right. That's why when they sing with their expression, they're not trying to hype you up. They're thinking about Jesus paid it all. All the hell I owe. Sin left a stain. But he made me white as, as snow. David gave them the position because who better to sing than somebody that can see the ground open up. And plagues upon people of disobedience. One of the songs I want to leave on tonight, uh, this morning, is that they sang was Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength. Now that understands, sons of Korah, how you can say without doubt that God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in trouble. That's a song. That comes from the deep parts of your heart. When you know you're at the edge of going in, but God said, no, I'm going to rescue you. If I bring you out, you won't come to church and sit quiet like you should have been here all the time. Rescuing you is going to change the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Point at somebody next to you and say, don't get me started. <laughs> I know what he saved me from. Y'all ain't talking to nobody. I know what he brought me out of when he could have let me slip on in it, but he said, no, I'm going to use you in the house of the Lord over there and over there and down here. I'm going to use you.
God is my refuge and my strength. Refuge. Nahum 1 and 7 says that God is a rescue, a place in the time of trouble. He's a strong hope. And he knows those that trust in him. God is a present help in the time of trouble. A help that has been proven and reliable. Cannot doubt him. He's helping me right now. A refuge from storms. He's a stronghold and a place to hide. It's a place you can run to when you have no place else to go. You can sit right in your car and go to God. Right in the midst of everything you're facing and go to God. The devil looking from the outside, but he can't get to you because God says, I got you blocked. He's doing everything he can to get around God to get to you. God said, don't come no further. I got him on block. Even future calamities that we will face from time to time, we have no reason to fear. The fear become a factor in the midst of calamities. Psalms 46, verse 2 and 3. Therefore, I will not fear, though the earth removed, be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. I will not fear. Earthquakes are happening. Tremors are after results. But I will not fear. Though I feel unstable ground up under me, I will not fear. I will hold steady to know God is my refuge. Mountains are being crumbled into the sea. This hyperbole here is speaking only to the expression of what could be going on. To show you the depths of the calamities of life's expression of how things could fall apart in a moment. But God is my help. I don't know how I'm going to make up the ends when I ain't got the middle, but God is my help. <laughs> he makes up the difference when I don't have the difference. Kids going wild. God's on the throne. He's still got this. He's my help in the time. Anybody got any trouble this morning? Guess what? You got some help. You got some help. Not just the government. You got some help from God. And when God helps, he helps up and he helps out. Give God a help praise just for a second. I'm going to finish. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. God is present. He's a sure foundation. Therefore, you were born and you live to worship. Psalms 46 and 4, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. A river brings joy to the city of God. It brings streams of happiness to the city of God. In the midst of the Most High, God is in that stream. There is a river flowing this morning. History teaches us that Jerusalem in itself did not have a river running through it, but the river was God. And as God flowed through, as he comes through the temple in the Ezekiel 47, and as the waters flow down, God begins to fill the river up. Jesus says, believe on me, as the scripture says, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. A river becomes so refreshing that when you are refreshed, you refresh somebody else. Your problem is that you got the river clogged up. But you unstop the river and let the river flow. Once the river flows, then you have life and life for somebody else. Dead folk don't need to be around dead folk. Live folk need to be around live folk. Believe on me as the scripture says, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You are a river flowing. Heart to heart. Soul to soul. Streams of life. Streams of life giving waters are making the city of God glad. Refreshing water. Prophetically speaking, these waters are flowing. They're flowing even this morning and you were created to worship. Rivers here are like you and I being planted in Psalms 1 and 3 by the rivers of water. Bringing forth our fruit in season. Leaf shall not wither. Whatsoever you do shall prosper. You can tell a prosperous believer because the river is constantly flowing. The river is constantly bursting out. It cannot be stopped because God is the river. 
world filled with calamities, but I got a river. People are dying of thirst, but I got a river. People are losing everything they got, but I got a river. All I got to do is tap into it. Come on, Timothy, help me out. He says, stir up the gift of God that's in you. You have to go up into a flame and let that river begins to burst forth out of you. That river is too big for you to hold it up. Let it out and let it give God praise. There is a river. Make glad the city of our God. God is in the midst of her. Psalms 46, 5. God is in the midst of her. He is living inside this city. He is the God that says this city shall not be moved. God is there and God is our help at the break of day. It is the daybreak that the enemy tries to come. When things have all been through the night, but now it's the break of a new day. I couldn't get you in the night season, but I'm going to try to get you in the morning. But God is a help all night long. And even in the break of day, I believe prophetically somebody is looking for a new day. God's about to break you into a new morning and a new mercy. The enemy thought he would shut you down and shut you out. But God said, I'm going to help you at the break of day. You've been laboring to get to where you are. Now the river is flowing out of your life. Clap your hands and say, this is my breakthrough. This is my breakthrough. This is my breakthrough. Through. Hallelujah. Tell two people, and I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. It's another morning, just another day that the Lord has kept me. Just another morning, I woke up glad. Didn't wake up sad and worried, depressed. I woke up with living waters, not dead waters, but living waters flowing through my house, flowing through my room, flowing out of my house, flowing to my job, living waters flowing to the mountaintop church, living waters flowing down my road, living, yeah, 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 yeah. living waters, living waters, living waters. Look at somebody say, I'm going to turn it up right here. I'm going to turn it up right here. Turn it up right here. Turn it up right here. Psalms 46, 10. Be still and know that I'm God. That's my run right there. I don't care what it looks like. But tell every demon that's bothering you, just shut up. Watch my God. He got me out. He brought me up. He gave me freshing waters. Now tell that problem, be still. Know that he is God. Your experience have taught you that God's got your back. That God's on your side. That God's going to pull you through. That God's going to bring you out. It's okay, baby. It's all right. Cry, but shout your way out. Mourn, but shout your way out. Heartache, but shout your way out. There is a river that makes glad the city of God. That river lives inside of me, and that river is God. Give God some praise in this house. around and prophesy to three people to be still and know that he's God. Know that he's God. In the midnight hour, at the break of day, when you don't have no one to turn to, you got be still. Be still. Know that I'm God. Hold your hands up. Thank you. For not allowing me to do rebellious stuff. Thank you for rescuing me from the rebellious ones. Thank you for bringing me to a peaceful place. Now God be exalted above every storm, every broken heart. Rise. Let God arise. The enemies be scattered. 
Rise, God, rise. The waters of refreshing come. Still my troubled mind. Your word says you are a help, and I need some help this morning. It's me, Lord. I'm in the place of trouble. Said you'll be a present help. Do it for me. Give me directions. Order my steps. Because you kept me alive to worship you. I should have went down, but I'm coming up. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Yeah, God. I'm coming up. I will wait on you and be of good courage as you strengthen my heart. In Jesus' name, give God praise. Help me help you help your neighbor. Tell somebody, I'm not going down with that rebellious bunch. That hole was big. It was an opening of the ground. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a moment. Thank you for allowing me to share. I must confess the text. Years of ministering and pastoring. The first time I saw Numbers 26, 11 was I was in Trinidad. And I said, wow. Cora's children didn't die. That's why they became Levites and worshipers. You are a kingdom of priests. And if you ever lose thought of why and how to worship, think about the hole that swallowed up your friends or the vice that they couldn't get out of. The downward spiral of their lives. And look at you. You <laughs> look at you. Look, look, look at you. Look at you look at you look at me back was against the wall it looked as if it was over but you made a way don't know how don't know why but I'm grateful and I'm standing here only because you made a way. You knew what it was going to end like. But you said that's not how my story would end. Am I talking to anybody in this house? He made a way. You couldn't have bought yourself out of it. All the help you can muster couldn't have got you out. God help you. God help you. Tell three people, God help you. I know he did. God help you. God help you. It was God that brought you out. Get on your feet and give God some praise in this house. Come on, church. I pulled you out just in the nick of time. My mother 
a man the house would sing an old song nobody but you Lord nobody but you could make me holy and heal me too when I was in trouble you brought me through nobody but you Lord nobody but you anybody feel like that this morning won't he do it let's go baptist for about 10 minutes look around tell somebody now won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it yes he'll do it waymaker miracle light in the darkness that's who you are the dark. That's who you are. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. That's who you are. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. That's who you are. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. That's who you are. That's who you are. Encourage two people, tell them I got a bad God. You got a bad God. I got an awesome God. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Sons of Korah excites me. I, Rhonda, I was reading the 44th Psalms, and they said that we will not trust in our bow, nor our sword. He said, but through the Lord, God will push down our enemies. I said, what is he talking about? Uh, Cedric, come quickly. He says that if, if I'm contending with Cedric, and stop there, I have my bow, I could probably shoot him with my bow or my nine. But if I had my sword, I'm even closer. But if I get too close, I can't pull my sword out. So it leaves me not being able to use my bow nor my sword, put your hands on my shoulder. We're in close proximity now. We're wrestling against flesh and blood. But even though he's bigger, Psalms 44 says, through you, God, will push down Y'all ain't helping me with this. I don't care how close it gets. You hang in there, baby. You got the power. Come on, hold your hands up. You got the power to push it. Through you. Push it down, I enemy. 